Hi, I'm Megan Buchter, Aim to Flourish Operations Manager, and this is the Professor Workshop on October 12, 2017. Let's see, okay. Today I want to talk about um, the story submission deadlines for fall 2017. I'd also like to review the Aim to Flourish story submission workflow in case there are any questions, and um, then there'll be time for questions or concerns at the end. So the first thing that I want to talk about are the 2017 story submission deadlines, so the deadlines for the end of this year. Um, and these are the deadlines if your students are interested in being eligible for a 2018 Flourish Prize. Um, so I just want to note that if your students aren't interested in winning a Flourish Prize, um, this schedule um, doesn't apply, but we'll get into that a little bit more later. So the first date is December 15th. And so on this date, your students should have their stories in second review if they would like to be eligible for a 2018 Flourish Prize. And this is so that we have time to review the stories. And so second review usually takes at least one week, and we want the students to be able to have time to make any changes and send their stories back if the second reviewer requests any, any edits. Um, we also need time to review the stories ourselves. And so um, the Aim to Flourish staff here um, you know, looks at and reviews every story before it's published and so we need a little bit of time to do that. Um, all stories published um, by uh, you know, midnight on December 31st are, will be eligible for a 2018 Flourish Prize. So um, just keep that in mind as if you're keeping an eye on your student stories at the end of the year. Um, you know, they must be published by the end of this year to be eligible. Um, on January 1st, we're going to begin our website transition. We don't know exactly how long this is going to take, so we're hoping for just, you know, a few days to get everything up to the new website. It might take a little bit longer, but we'll definitely keep you posted. Um, if your student stories aren't published um, by the end of the day on December 31st, and they're in a different stage in Compose, in First Review, in Second Review, um, then they will be transitioned to the new website in that stage. And um, while the website is under construction, they won't be able to get to their stories, but they'll be able to continue working on them as soon as the website transition is completed. This is just a calendar giving everybody a, a visual to see um, when these deadlines are. So December 15th, that's a Friday, all stores should be in second review. We're aiming to have that second review completed by the 22nd, which gives students time to edit and us time to get the stories published. I certainly understand that this is during the holiday season. We are gonna be working our hardest to make sure that everything gets published by December 31st. So I'm bringing this up now in October, just so you, know, you and your students can understand um, that if they want their stories to be eligible for a Flourish Prize, a 2018 Flourish Prize, then they need to have them in um, and published by the 31st. Um, these deadlines are obviously kind of um, the last minute deadlines. So by all means, if your students are finished with their stories in October, in November, at the beginning of December, if your deadlines for your class are earlier, please go ahead, get them submitted. Um, you know, the earlier that we can get the stories through this process and published, the better. We want everyone, you know, to be eligible for for a Flourish Prize and um, to feel excited about that process and not to feel rushed at the end. So, um, but just keep these deadlines in mind and please go ahead and, um, you know, uh, reiterate them to your students. All right, so the next thing that I wanna talk about is the Aim to Flourish story workflow. And I just wanna talk about this because I feel like sometimes it's a, it can get a little confusing the way that it's set up. And so I wanna make sure that everybody is clear and on the same page because knowing how this works will really help move your students' stories through this process and get them published on time. So just to go through the stages in the Aim to Flourish story workflow, we have the identify stage. And so this is the stage where students start their story. And as long as a, a student has identified a professor in a university for their story, the story is gonna move right into the compose stage. So there's no approval here. Um, it's just um, like a pre-story stage where the students can start their story. The next stage that we have is compose. And 
Um, in the compose stage, this is where the students work on their story. Only the authors on the story um, can make edits to the story. When they're finished with the story, they save the story and they can send it to first review. Um, they can also archive the story in this stage. So if they choose that they don't want to continue with the story or if they accidentally created a duplicate story, they can go and archive the story as long as it's in the compose stage. First review is our professor review stage. And so this is where the professors can review and edit the story. Only the professor on the story can edit and comment and review the story at this stage. So students aren't able to go back and make any changes to the story if the story is in the first review stage. Um, the professor can make comments and edits to the story. And if they would like the students to make more edits to the story, they can send the story back to compose. If they think that the story is good to be published, they can send it on to second review. Or if they think, okay, the students tried this, tried. Um, they're not gonna make any more edits to the story. The story shouldn't be published. The professor can go ahead and archive the story when it's in first review. Um, I encourage you to go ahead and use that feature to archive the story in first review if you think that the story is something that shouldn't be published. Um, this is gonna help clear up that workflow and eliminate confusion if we're, you know, from my end, if I'm worried about, um, you know, you getting your stories published on time, then you think that the story shouldn't be published at all, you can go ahead and archive those stories. So second review is where one of our, we call them story stewards, um, there are editors, the Aim to Flourish story editors, that's where they review the story. And so at this stage, they're the only ones who can edit and comment on the story. Um, so if the student needs to make additional edits to the story at this time, this, the story steward is gonna have to send that story back. Um, when the story steward is done with the story, they will either send the story back to first review if the story needs additional edits, or they'll send it on to pre-publish, um, where an Aim to Flourish staff member will look at the story and get the story um, published. Um, story stewards can also archive the story at this stage if a story is in second review. It can be archived by a story steward. Um, that only happens if a story just flat out doesn't meet the Aim to Flourish criteria, um, which would mostly mean that um, the story was about a nonprofit. Um, but occasionally, you know, if it's not about a positive impact or it's not scalable or it doesn't meet the UN SDGs, then that might be a reason to archive it too. But usually in second review, the only reason a story gets archived is if it's, um, if it's about a nonprofit company. Um, then we have the pre-published stage. And so that means that the story has passed the second review. It's sitting in pre-published. It's going to be reviewed by an Aim to Flourish staff member and then published. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Um, at this stage, um, you're 99% guaranteed to get to get your story published. Um, occasionally, if something again doesn't meet an aim to flourish criteria, then at this stage, somebody would we would archive the story. But once it hits pre-published, it's going to get published. Um, we just have to take a final look at it and get the story published. When the story is published, um, the professor and the authors will receive an email notification, and then their story will be available to view um, publicly on the website. So I have this diagram which just talks a little bit or gives a visual as to um, how stories move through the workflow. And so stories can only move through the workflow um, by going forwards or backwards one step. So a student in Compose can send their story to first review. And the first reviewer can either send the story back to Compose or on to second review. And um, the second reviewer then can only send the story either on to pre-publish or back to first review. And I really want to point this out just because if a second reviewer has sees that a story needs some additional work or some additional edits, they're only able to send that story back to first review. And so at that point, a professor will receive an email, but it's your responsibility if you want your students to make additional edits to that story to send the story back to compose. Um, and then if your student makes those changes to the story, they'll submit it back to first review and you have to be the one to push it on to second review so that the second reviewer can look at the story again and submit it to pre-publish. And so I certainly understand that this creates, you know, extra steps in there for the professor, especially if the second reviewer is requesting additional edits to the story. Um, but this is the way the workflow is right now. We're hoping that with the new website, things will be a little bit easier to use and this will be a little bit different. Um, but for now, you should just be aware that once a story hits second review, if that reviewer is requesting additional edits, 
you'll receive an email that says that a story has been sent back to first review and then you will need to send that story back to compose. And, um, you know, as the sooner that you can do that, can send the story back to the compose, the quicker the students can look at the story and submit it back to you and you can submit it back to first or back to second review. Um, so it's just something to be aware of, something to, to look out for, um, because we want to make sure that all of the stories get through that workflow and get to pre-publish and get published by December 31st. And finally, I just wanted to let everybody know that by the end of 2017, we are going to have more than 1,000 student written stories published on our website. And that is thanks to all of our hardworking professors that work with us every day and work with their students every day to get to get these stories published and get these stories out there for the world and to, for everyone in the world to see. So we really appreciate you and we appreciate you sticking with us. And I am happy to answer any questions about how this works at any time. And um, we hope that you enjoy the rest of your day and um, please reach out with any questions. Thank you.